Hi guys, my name is Kiva and this is DIY with KB. Today we are spicing up my Target Atta bookshelves. You guys love these bookshelves when I did them in my original living room tour, but of course I myself and I've gotten bored. So I thought that I would take the time to spice them up a bit and make them look like the thaddiest bookshelves from Restoration Hardware. They're essentially the same, they just have a little bit of texture to them. So of course I was just strolling around Walmart, as one does, and I picked up this kids air dry clay. I think it was five dollars per five pounds, which I feel like is really good for clay. And I'm just going to rub it on the edges here and then I'm going to paint them after that by hand and that's literally it. But it's going to give me some texture and add some like dimension to this really affordable bookcase. Bookshelf? Bookcase. It doesn't matter. Shelves. I also want to say that you could do this to any of the glass shelves. I showed you those ones from Ikea which are also really nice. I think they actually might be a bit taller, just not as wide. So you could do that to those as well to make them look a little bit more high end. And then I'm going to show you how I style my shelves. Styling shelves is a really important skill because it's really going to like take your home to the next level. I definitely struggle with it so I'll just show you how I mess around and my whole thought process. And I want mine to be black because I want to be like the um, iron wrought Thaddeus that they have. But you can do it in gold and silver, whatever. You're just going to have to go with paint over top of this. Black is easier though because you can have like more imperfections just because the frame is already black. Um, so I'll just say that. But I'm literally just going to take a bunch of clay and try to mold it around here and you don't need it to be perfect or anything right because you're going for texture so I'm gonna do it everywhere except for in these grooves here where the glass needs to lay because I want the glass still to lay well so I'm literally just gonna do this I'm gonna do it however I want to do it and that's literally it it's like literally playing with play-doh you know when you used to be a kid and you used to roll it out to be like a snake or whatever you guys didn't do that? <laughs> I didn't roll out to be a snake. What did you make? Like little bears or um... Wow. Well, I guess dogs. you're smarter than I... You know dogs. that dog that I draw with yeah. all the circles? You used to make that with yeah. Play-Doh? That's pretty exciting. Hi guys, how are you? This is day two of my shelves. As you can see, the clay is dry, and there are a lot of cracks in it, which I didn't foresee, but that, honestly, that makes a lot of sense. But I tried out painting it with black paint, and it actually covers up really well, and I really love the texture. So I think I'm gonna move forward with it and see how it goes. So this is what it looked like once I painted my side completely. Anne's side actually all crumbled off, so we learned that you need to use really thick pieces of clay or else it's gonna fall off. So at least we learned that before I painted all of hers and was really upset and we had a whole argument about it. Um, but I painted mine and I liked how it turned out. Of course it needed some touch-ups. So that was mine, so then I got started on hers and I figured out that I didn't really need to do parts of the sides well because you can't see them. Then I got to painting hers once I was done doing the clay. The clay on her side actually took a lot less time than my side because I kind of knew what I was doing. And I just sat on the ground and painted. I use really cheap paint. I get all my paint from Michaels and this is just level one or level two artist loft paint. And I just sat there while Babe was in a meeting. I did have an incident where I dropped like a whole tub of paint on the floor and like ran and like tripped and it was like a whole thing. Okay guys, the shelves are done, so now I want to show you how to style them. Styling shelves can be super difficult. I have a really hard time with it, but I'm trying to embrace minimalism, so I'm a little bit uncomfortable, but I think I have something good in store for you today. For these shelves, I really wanted to do a black, white, and gold color scheme because I wanted to tie in my nice gold mirror and my artwork, which is all black and white. So, I went to At Home. If you guys have never been to At Home, it is a home decor store. They have, it's like a the Walmart of uh, home decor. That's what I would call it because it's like a huge warehouse and they just have random stuff. It, the quality definitely isn't always as good as home goods, 
but you can walk in there and definitely come out with like a few things that match whereas sometimes I go to home goods and I'm like okay I found one thing I gotta go to eight different home goods to like get things for like one shelf before we hop into the styling I just want to show you what the shelves look like now they are black, they have texture, and it looks like the thaddeus in that it has this curved feature here and it has the texture. I didn't make it look identical to the thaddeus, obviously, because one, I don't know how to do metal work, obviously, um, and two, these are my Target shelves. I wasn't gonna go out and buy new shelves. I like these Target shelves. They hold up weight really well, which is good because I put really heavy things on them. So I just wanted to spruce them up a bit. So I think they look a little bit more high end and contribute something more to the room. I feel like they make a statement on their own without decor on them. So it's gonna be nice to put some stuff on them. The first thing I wanna say is that I'm styling with crystals and because they're so heavy, I already put them on the glass because taking them on and off is just not good for the glass, but let's get started otherwise. So if you've seen my living room, my most recent living room tour, you know that the mirror was in this space, but it wasn't working for me. I just like, it was really awkward to look at myself in the mirror with a coffee table here. I know that sounds like a really shallow reason. It's not because I love myself. I just wanted to be able to actually use the mirror for what a mirror is for. So I wanted to put the shelf here. That meant that I needed to do some big, nice art piece. If you watched the beginning of this video, you know there's tons of holes in this wall. And if you don't feel like covering your holes, the best way to do it is with a piece of artwork. So I took a huge oversized piece of artwork that has my accent colors in it black and gold and mounted it over my shelves. It's really oversized. I actually really like how it fills the space because oversized is kind of like my thing, but you could do um, an art series with things close together. You don't have to do so much, but that's what I wanted to do. The first thing that I did is I made some decorative books myself. I love decorative books, but they can be so expensive online. So I made these decorative books. I got these ugly, um, storage containers from Joanne, which are on clearance now at both Joanne and Michaels, and I spray painted them white with Rust-Oleum Ultra Matte White Paint, and it gives me that nice book look without me actually having to pay for coffee table books or find books that are the right color. Um, and a lot of you have actually DM'd me about this and said that you had remotes in there, and that's such a good idea. So thank you guys for sharing that with me. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take these books and put them on the outside here. And then I got this David bust from Home Goods. I have this big one right here that you guys have all seen. This is a small one. And I'm just gonna use this to style the top shelf there. Since I put something on the left here, on the next shelf, I'm not gonna put something just on the left. I either have to put it on the right in the center or on both sides. That's the rule that I follow and I think that it really, really helps. So now here's the first shelf, which is all white. And then this is the second shelf. I've just chosen to go with vessels. I have black on this side to contrast with this. And then I have white on this side so that this whole shelf is taken up. I don't just do what I did up here, but it's really nice and modern. And then on the next shelf, I have crystals. What I did is I took this crystal, which I got from Home Goods, and this one that I got from Home Goods, and pushed them together so it looks like one large crystal. That is a really great price saving technique because a crystal of this size is really expensive and we don't want to break the bank. Next we're going in with some coffee table books. I have tons of coffee table books but I will tell you that it's so hard to find books that are actually like the same sheen and look nice together. That's me being 100% honest with you which is why I made some of my display books. But these are two of my favorite ones. The white book is such a phenomenal book. I actually read that coffee table book. If people tell you that they read their coffee table books all the time, they're lying to you. They don't do that. But this is one that I actually do read and then my nice Gucci book here. Then I'm going to go in with a gold accent because of course I want gold to be my accent color but I don't want it to look gaudy because that's literally the last thing I want to do. I like my shelves full but also intentionally sparse. So I'm going to add something else to the shelf. I just took a piece of eucalyptus that I painted and put it in this acrylic frame. You can do this with feathers or really anything you want to preserve. And I'm just going to put that over here. So it barely takes up any space, right? Because it's acrylic, it's see-through. But it adds a little touch. And now we're just going to finish up this side by putting this nice bowl from Magnolia Home on the bottom. It's a nice shallow vessel. There's not too much going on, so it can be all by itself, but still make a statement. I also want to say that I changed things around so much. This bowl has gone from there to there to there to there all in the time that I've been recording this video. So be okay with like shifting things around. That's totally okay when it comes to home decor. It's all about you being satisfied with your space. 
I put this in the middle, but now I've changed my mind. I want it over there. Now I'm gonna go on with these boxes. This is from Ikea. This is from Michael's. They're both $2.99, really great price. Decorative boxes, in my opinion, should not be expensive. You can DIY them or you can get them for a craft store for a really good price. If you want them to be gold, get some gold spray paint. That's what people seem to really like. Spray paint, there you go. I'm just setting those in the middle because you want something simple, but you want your colors to pop. So that's all I'm doing. This bowl is also from at home. You saw this in my bedroom transformation. It also has this nice texture that you see here. And I love that. It's nice and earthy looking and it's huge. A huge open vessel like this makes a huge statement and it doesn't require that much effort. So this is just gonna go in the middle on the top. To follow that up, I'm gonna add some earthiness by bringing in green of moss balls. These are moss balls that I got from Home Goods, but I'm telling you, go to the dollar store, Dollar Tree specifically, don't get me started on how I feel about the different dollar stores, but they have really great moss pellets for a dollar. I think there's like six or so on a packet, and that's a really great way to get this style without spending too much money. So I'm just gonna put this here. And as you can see, I've broken my rule a little bit because this is in the middle and this is also in the middle, but that's okay with me because this is nice and long and I think all the different balls make like a little bit more of a statement, so I'm okay with that. So you can break the rules sometimes, but if I get tired of this, again, I'm just gonna move it around. I'm gonna add some more coffee table books because I have books, faux books on this side, but I don't have any books over here yet. So I like to get my coffee table books predominantly from Amazon, especially since it tells me all the dimensions. And you have to be careful because you can get like a huge coffee table book and it works on your coffee table, but then when you put it on a shelf, it doesn't sit up. So I love my Louis Vuitton book. I really wanted it over here, but it would just shatter my shelves. <laughs> so it's good to be conscious of that. But when I'm styling a book like this, I make sure that all of the text is going in the same direction. That just makes it look a little bit more seamless. It's something that you just gotta pay attention to. And then I always like to put the smaller book on the interior or whatever. I want it to look like a staircase. I just think that that looks really cute. And I'm gonna go in with another gold accent to tie in the gold over there. I'm just gonna lean it up against this book. And finally, I wanna add some more gold. So I got this picture frame from Home Goods, and then I went online and I just printed out a map of Paris. You can print out anything. I really like maps. They do maps a lot at RH, so I wanna do that on cardstock. And I'm just gonna throw that over here. I started editing this, guys, and then I realized I broke my own rule. Can you imagine that? I had everything here in the middle, except for this row, which is exactly what I'm telling you not to do. So I'm embarrassed, but honestly, that's real life. Um, so I took this bowl, and instead of having it on the side here, I put it in the middle, and then I just shifted these boxes to the right. That's what I try to stick to. It doesn't always work. And choose a color scheme before you start styling. If you, you know, buy everything that you like, sometimes those things don't work together. So something that I love to do in stores and I put everything that I like in the cart, and then I go to like an abandoned aisle, and I set everything out, and I style it in the store so that I know that the things work together before I get home. So guys, these are my DIY shelves. I hope I taught you that you can really upcycle anything and make it look a little bit more beautiful. I didn't really do much to these shelves. I basically just had like kids playtime, but I added some texture and some paint that makes it look like it wasn't just $150 from Target. I love having a nice minimalist home, but I know that sometimes it can look a little bit sterile. So adding textures and little pops of color like gold really helps warm up the space. Thank you so much for watching today's video. If you enjoyed it, please like this video, subscribe to my channel, and check me out on Instagram at kiva.brent. I love connecting with you guys, and I really appreciate it when you send me messages on Instagram or leave comments telling me the things that you wanna see. That really helps me create content that has what you want in mind. So please keep doing that. Until next time, have a wonderful day and thanks for watching.